Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to this uh, tutorial and uh, in the last uh, couple of tutorials we are solving uh, vapor problems related to vapor power cycles. We have seen uh, already seen and solved some of the problems related to simple Rankine cycle, Rankine cycle with reheat and regeneration. Okay. So, to continue this further in this uh, tutorial we are going to solve a few problems on combined cycle and cogeneration. Right. So, the first problem is basically on cogeneration. So, here we, we, uh, a textile plant requires both um, heat and uh, you know power. Okay. So, here the problem states that a textile plant requires 4 kg per second of saturated stream at 2 mega Pascal, which is extracted from the turbine of a cogeneration plant. So, this uh, stream will be used for the process uh, heat power requirement and uh, stream enters the turbine at 8 mega Pascal and 500 degree centigrade at a rate of 11 kg per second and it leaves at 20 kilo Pascal. So, the 20 kilo Pascal is basically the condenser pressure. The extracted stream leaves the process heater as a saturated liquid and mixes with the feed water at constant pressure. The mixture is pumped to the boiler pressure. So, assuming an isentropic efficiency of 88 percent for both the turbine and the pumps determine the rate of process heat supply, the net work output and the utilization factor of the plant. So, let us first uh, start with the schematic diagram of this plant. So, typically uh, there will be a boiler. Now, here uh, we are supplying the feed water from a pump. So, let us say this is a pump and uh, it is uh, supplying the steam to the turbine. So, from the turbine we are extracting some of the stream uh, for uh, feed water uh, for the process heater. right? So, this is the process heater where basically this stream will go and it will be utilized for uh, heating some chemicals or some other things. Okay. And subsequently at the, at the exit of the turbine we are collecting the stream and then that is going to the condenser okay. and from the condenser it will enter a pump because you see that the, there is a pressure difference uh, at the exit of the turbine the pressure is basically the condenser pressure which is given as 20 kilo Pascal and this process stream is extracted at 2 mega Pascal. Okay. So, we have to utilize a pump in between uh, this uh, uh, mixer. So, here uh, it is pressurized to, an, to 2 mega Pascal and then there is a mixer where basically this stream will enter and then together it will come out and then subsequently it will be pumped to 8 mega Pascal right that is the boiler pressure. Okay. So, that is the process diagram and now uh, we can identify different stations. So, let us say this is the station number 1 before the first pump and this is the second pump then this is sec uh, station number 2 uh, let us say this is 3, 4 then 5, then we have 6 here before the turbine and uh, here it is extracted at 7 and this is 8 at the exit of the turbine. Okay. So, this is the uh, diagram uh, schematic diagram of this. Now, we can also draw the T s diagram corresponding to this. So, let me draw the T s diagram. So, so, let us say this is point 1 where you have basically the sa uh, saturated water and that is pumped to point 2. So, this uh, all, all these uh, processes are basically uh, I mean we are having isentropic efficiency is given for both the turbine and the pump. So, we have to add uh, we have to account for that in while solving this problem. Okay. So, let us say uh, 
so so this line is corresponding to constant pressure at 2 megapascal and this is 20 kilopascal and here it is 8 megapascal right so suppose we marked the turbine inlet at 6 and then from 6 we can draw an isentropic line we probably do not know that what is the condition at uh, this intermediate point but for the time being i am uh, putting it as this let us say this is 7s which is representing the isentropic uh, state and uh, this is 7 and then if i continue it further it will come to 8 and this is 8s so basically 6 uh, 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 the s6 equal to s7s and that should be equal to s8s right that is this is basically an isentropic process whereas 6 to 7 is an actual process and 7 to 8 is also an actual process now 1 to 2 is basically the first pump so it will not be perpendicular because the isentropic efficiency of the pump is also given so i will draw it like this so let us say this is 1 to 2 and then we are extracting the steam from this point 7 and this steam is uh, will be used for the process heating and then uh, at the exit of the process heater it is given that the steam will come out as saturated water okay so now we have to mix this uh, feed water at point 2 with this one yeah, the saturated water at point 3 so after mixing this will be the final state let us say this is 4 and from 4 uh, we can again uh, i mean there is a pump 2 and that will take it to state 5 please note that these are not perpendicular to the x axis so these are basically the actual process uh, i could have marked the isentropic processes like 1 2 s and 4 2 5 s right these are the isentropic processes so this is the typical uh, ts diagram for this plant now we can start the solution so from the we have to use the steam table so we'll start with point, point number 1 where enthalpy at point 1 is basically the enthalpy of the saturated water at 20 kilopascal which from the table you will get it as 251.42 kilojoule per kg similarly we can find what is the specific volume corresponding to this condition and that that is basically point double zero one zero one seven meter cube per kg now we can calculate what is the state at point two so h2 will be h1 plus the pump work right so we have already seen similar type of problem in the previous class so i am not going into the uh, details but uh, this pump work can be calculated as v1 times p2 minus p1 and since uh, efficiency of the asynthropic efficiency of the pump is given so you have to divide it by eta p so the, so that will be the h2 okay so now you can plug in the numbers so p2 is basically 2 megapascal you have to convert it into kilopascal and p1 is 20 kilopascal so put in the number here and the isentropic efficiency of the pump is given as 88 percent and the turbine efficiency is also 88 percent so you can put 0.88 as the efficiency of the pump and then h2 can be obtained as 253.71 kilojoule per kg now state 3 is basically saturated water at uh, 2 megapascal so correspondingly you can find enthalpy of the saturated water as 908.47 kilojoule per kg okay so now uh, we have to find what is the state 4 so for that we have to consider the mixing process so if you look at the mixing process here uh, this is the mix mixer where what we are doing we are supplying feed water at station 2 which is mixing with the saturated water at 3 and it is coming out at a state 4 okay so state 4 is basically a subcooled state and you can calculate what is the enthalpy for this state 4 so for that we have to uh, do the energy balance across this heater so basically you know the energy in is equal to energy out and from this i can write 
m dot 3 h 3 is coming in and it is also and m dot 2 h 2 is another stream and then what is going out is m dot 4 h 4. Now, if you look at the problem statement it is given um, m dot 3 is given that is 4 kg per second whereas, m dot and uh, what is said here the stream enters the turbine at a rate of 11 kg per second. So, this is the total flow rate which is nothing but m dot 4. So, m dot 4 is 11 kg per second. So, m dot 2 will be the difference between these two that is 7 kg per second. So, now uh, you know h 3 and h 2 and you also know the mass uh, m dot 3 and m dot 2 and also know m dot 4. So, basically from this you can find h 4. So, please calculate this yourself I am just writing the final answer. So, h 4 will be 491.81 kilo joule per kg. So, that is the enthalpy corresponding to state 4. Now, we can also find what is the specific volume corresponding to this state 4 and here we will make an assumption uh, that this uh, state 4 the specific volume is uh, equal to uh, the saturated water at that pressure right. So, it is uh, so for this condition I uh, I will basically uh, take this enthalpy of the saturated water as this and from this I can uh, obtain this specific volume and this is 0 0.000, 0 0.0001 uh, 1058 sorry it is 0 0.001058 meter cube per kg ok. So, that is the specific volume at state 4. Now, I will calculate what is the state 5. So, state 5 H enthalpy of the state 5 will be H 4 plus the second pump ok second pump work. So, that will be V 4 multiplied by v P 5 minus P 4 divided by eta P. So, P 5 is 8 mega Pascal you can write it at 8000 kilo Pascal and P 4 is 2 mega Pascal that is 2000 kilo Pascal and then specific volume we just obtained. So, you can plug in the numbers and H 5 you will obtain as 499.02 kilo joule per kg. So, that is H 5. Now, H 6 is basically uh, uh, the inlet of the turbine. So, that can be obtained. Uh, so, for that we know what is the condition. So, we know that P 6 is 8 mega Pascal and T 6 is 500 degree centigrade. So, corresponding to this we can find what is H 6. So, H 6 is 3399.5 kilo joule per kg. So, sometimes I will not write down the unit, but you always write it and S 6 is 6.7266 kilo joule per kg Kelvin. So, these are the condition for 0 0.6. Now, we need to know what is the 0 0.7 right. So, 6 to 7 is an actual process whereas, 6 to 7 is, is an isentropic process. So, it is easy to find what is the state 7s because it is an isentropic process. So, basically S 6 is equal to S 7s and that is equal to 6.7266. Therefore, you can basically uh, look at that stream table and you can find H 7s. So, H 7s you can find it as 3000 0.4 kilo joule per kg. So, when you find this you will see that this point will lie outside the vapor dome. So, you have to look at the super heated vapor table and from that you will find 7 uh, the point 7 s. Now, you can ex extract the enthalpy at point 7 and for that you know the turbine efficiency is given that should be equal to H 6 minus H 7 is the actual work done by the turbine and H 6 minus H 7 s is the isentropic work done. So, from this you can find what is H 7. So, H 7 will be H 6 minus eta t multiplied by H 6 minus H 7 s. So, you have to just put the numbers here all the numbers are known. So, finally, you will get H 7 as 3048.3 kilo joule per kg. Okay. Similarly, now you can find what is the enthalpy of 0 0.8. So, I will not repeat this the, the step is basically the same there you have to take S 6 equal to S 8 S 
and then from it from that you will find what is the enthalpy for this point 8 is and again using the turbine efficiency you can find enthalpy of the state 8. So, I am just writing H 8 and it is your task to find it. So, H 8 is 2 3 57.6 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, now we know all this uh, all the enthalpies of different states. So, we can easily uh, find out what is the process heat. So, the process heat is basically the enthalpy difference between 0.7 to 0.3 right. So, that is the amount of process heat. So, if I write Q p ok, so Q p is the process heat. So, Q process uh, Q p let us say Q dot p I can write it as m dot. Uh, so, this is the state 7 where we are extracting multiplied by the enthalpy difference between states 7 and 3. So, m dot 7 is nothing but 4 kg per second and H 7 we obtained as 3048.3 and H 3 is 908.47 kilo joule per kg. So, that will give you 8559 kilowatt. So, that is the process heat. So, this is the first part of the problem. Second part is that we have to calculate what is the net work output of the system. So, we will start with the turbine work output. So, W t out is nothing but if you look at the diagram m dot 7 multiplied by um, H 6 minus. So, it will be H 6 minus H 7 plus m dot 8 H 6 minus H 8. Okay. So, if you look at the diagram, so or we can write m dot 6 uh, minus m dot 8 uh, basically uh, m dot 6 into H 6 minus H 8 is basically the total uh, one and then we can subtract this m dot 7 H 7 minus H 8 something like this. Okay. So, we can just find out the turbine work output here actually there is uh, 11 kg per second of steam that is expanding from 6 to 7, but thereafter it is only 7 kg per second steam which is expanding from say 0 0.7 to 8. Okay. So, the, that you have to take care. So, I can write it as m dot 7 is basically 4 kg per second, h 6 is double 3 double 9 0.5, h 7 is 3048.3, m dot 8 is 7 kg per second and then h 6 minus h 8 is double 3 double 9 0.5 minus 2 3 5 7 point 6. So, this will give you 8698 kilowatt. So, that is the turbine work output. Now, we can also calculate what are the pump work. Pump work is basically m dot 7 sorry it is m dot 1 times uh, w p basically. So, w pump this is the first pump plus m dot 4 w pump this is the second pump. So, again W pump is basically you can find from this enthalpy difference. So, H 2 minus H 1 is the first pump, H 5 minus H 4 is the second pump and you know what are the mass flow rates. So, you can just plug in the number, I am not calculating, I am not writing all the steps, but the final answer is 95 kilowatt. So, this is the pump, total pump work. So, the net work output of the cycle is W t out minus W dot p in. Okay. So, turbine work minus pump work which is nothing but 8603 kilowatt. So, this is the network output of this cycle and the third part is that the utilization factor we have to calculate. So, utilization factor is basically defined um, by this uh, by basically the total work output and the total process uh, heat okay, on in the numerator. So, it is the net work output from the cycle plus q dot process divided by the total heat that is supplied. So, q dot in. Okay. So, we need to calculate what is the q dot in. So, q dot in is basically if you look at the diagram. 
So, this is the um, from 5 to 6 you are raising the enthalpy in the boiler. So, it is H 6 minus H 5 times the mass flow rate. Okay. So, m dot 5 H 6 minus H 5, m dot 5 is 11 kg per second, H 6 is 399.5 and H 5 is 499.02 that will give you as 31905 kilowatt. Okay. So, now you can plug plug in the all the numbers because you know the what is q dot p, what is w dot net and what is q dot in and then the utilization factor you calculate it as 53.8 percent. So, in this problem we have looked into a cogeneration plant where basically you are uh, generating some amount of electri electricity by expanding the steam in the turbine and also you are bleeding the steam for process heating. Okay. So, we have seen how to calculate the, the network output of the system and the utilization factor and also the process heat. Uh, for this problem we identified all the states first and we calculated the enthalpies for all these points and then we uh, we could solve the uh, the total process heat and then the network output etcetera okay so second problem is uh, uh, basically related to a power plant okay so it's a um, it's a combined gas steam power plant and there is a typo so it should be eta cc right so uh, uh, this is a combined gas steam power plant where we can find out the total efficiency of this combined cycle and that uh, the total efficiency of this combined system is eta c c. Okay. This is not r by c c, it is eta c c and that can be written in terms of the efficiency of the gas turbine plus efficiency of the steam turbine minus the product of these two. Okay. So, basically eta g is the efficiency of the gas, uh, gas turbine cycle and eta s is the efficiency of the steam turbine cycle and uh, these are the expressions that you that is given okay so using this relation okay using this relation determine the efficiency of a combined cycle power plant that consists of a topping gas turbine cycle with an efficiency of 40% so basically uh, this is the second part of the problem where the gas turbine efficiency is given 40% and the steam turbine is the bottoming cycle and its efficiency is 30 percent. Okay. Also, you have to prove that the value of eta c c is greater than either of eta g or eta s. Okay. So, so, let us first draw a diagram to understand this problem. So, you have a you have a gas turbine. So, let us say this is a gas turbine. Okay. So, here W g is the amount of work output from the gas turbine and what is going in is basically q in. Okay. Now, the whatever heat you are rejecting, okay, it is going to, so this is q g out that is the amount of heat that is being rejected by the gas turbine and it is being utilized to produce steam for the Dankin cycle operation. Okay. So, there is a steam turbine. Okay. So, this exhaust heat from the gas turbine is going to the steam cycle okay. right? and then it is producing some amount of work output that is W s okay. and it is rejecting some amount of heat to the uh, to the ambient okay, or the lower uh, temperature reservoir. Okay. So, this is a high temperature reservoir and this is a low temperature reservoir. Okay. So, from the high temperature reserve reservoir, the Q in is going to the gas turbine and then from the steam turbine, you are rejecting heat to the ambient or the low temperature reservoir. Okay. So, that is the schematic of this um, combined cycle operation. So, in a combined cycle, you can either have a combination of gas turbine and steam turbine or you can also have two steam turbines in tandem. Okay. So, the, the, this is basically the combined cycle operation. So, let us first try to find out this, uh, try to prove this relationship. Okay. So, to prove this relationship, let us first define what is eta c c. Okay. Eta combined cycle is nothing but the total work output by the heat input to the cycle. 
okay, that is q in. Now, it can also be written as 1 minus q out over q in, right. Okay. So, q out is the amount of heat rejected from this combined from this combined cycle, right, and q in is going to this combined cycle, right. So, therefore, efficiency of the combined cycle can be written as 1 minus q out over q in. Now, second part is the efficiency of the gas turbine, which can be written as W g divided by q in. Okay. You know that is the work done by the turbine divided by the heat supplied. Okay. So, this can be also written as 1 minus q g out over q in. Okay. The third is the efficiency of the steam turbine, which can be written as W s over q g or over q out uh, q g out that is the amount of heat supplied. So, in the steam turbine what is the heat supplied that is this much q g out whatever the heat is rejected from the gas turbine is going to the steam turbine. Okay. So, that is the heat supplied and what is the output output is W s. Okay. So, this can be written as 1 minus q out over q g out. Okay. So, these are the three efficiencies. Now, I can calculate what is eta g plus eta s minus eta g eta s. So, I will simply substitute these numbers. So, this is 1 minus q g out over q in plus eta s is 1 minus q out over q g out minus eta g eta s that is 1 minus q g out by q in 1 minus q out over q g out. So, you, you can basically now simplify this relationship and after simplification you will get 1 minus q out over q in. Okay, so, I am not doing this entire step, you have to basically calculate this product of this, this and then you can uh, do the calculations basically. So, it is a simple algebra that you can do and finally, you will get this expression. So, this is basically 1 minus q out by q in which is nothing but eta c c right. Okay. So, it is proved. Okay. So, we have proved that the efficiency of a combined cycle can be obtained as the sum of the effici individual efficiencies of the gas turbine cycle and the steam turbine cycle and you have to subtract the product of the efficiencies of the gas turbine and steam turbine cycles. So, now using this relationship we can calculate what is the efficiency of a combined cycle which is having a topping gas turbine cycle with 40 percent efficiency and a bottoming steam turbine cycle with an efficiency of 30 percent. Okay. So, what I can do I can calculate eta c c that is eta g plus eta s minus eta g eta s. Now, what is eta g that is 0 0.4 40 percent and eta s is 0 0.3 or 30 percent. So, this will be 0 0.4 plus 0 0.3 minus 0 0.4 times 0 0.3. So, you calculate it as 0 0.58 or 58 percent. So, what we can see that the efficiency of the combined cycle is 58 percent which is higher than the individual efficiencies of the gas turbine cycle and the steam turbine cycle. Okay. Now, coming to the third part that prove that the value of eta c c is greater than either of eta g or eta s. So, through this example you have already seen that, but uh, if you are asked to prove this then you can start from this expression again and you can write this in terms of factors. So, let us say first I will write eta c c as eta g plus eta s times 1 minus eta g. Right. Now, here you know that uh, the combined cycle efficiency is basically sum of this plus this. Now, here this this second term, okay, this term is positive 
since eta g is less than 1 right okay it is a positive term because eta g is always less than 1. So, 1 minus eta g is always uh, term which is basically a positive term okay okay which is multiplied with eta s okay so therefore it is always it should be always greater than eta g right okay so, we can also write this in terms of eta s plus eta g times 1 minus eta s now the second term is positive since eta s is always less than 1 right therefore this entire term should be greater than eta s okay so thus we can conclude eta cc will be always greater than eta g or eta s individually right so that is the third part of this problem so we have seen how to obtain the efficiency of a combined cycle and uh, we have seen that the efficiency of the combined cycle is higher than the effi individual efficiencies of the gas turbine and the steam turbine cycle okay so coming to the third problem so the third problem is basically uh, again a combined cycle operation but here uh, here the gas turbine cycle is a topping cycle okay so in the gas turbine cycle of a combined gas steam power plant that has a pressure ratio of 12 okay so i can write the pressure ratio as 12 so rp is 12 for the gas turbine and the air enters the compressor at 310 kelvin okay so uh, first let us try to draw the ts diagram okay so i will draw the vapor dome first and i will start with the steam cycle so what is happening to the steam so um, steam expands in a high pressure turbine to a pressure of 2.5 mega Pascal and is reheated in the combustion chamber to 550 degree centigrade. So, it is a reheat cycle. So, the, so I can draw it like this. So, 3 to 4 is the expansion in the first turbine. Then what you do? You are reheating this. you are reheating this and then expanding it to the condenser pressure which is this 0 0.6 okay so these points are all representative i am not sure whether this 0 0.4 will lie within the vapor dome or outside the vapor dome that we will eventually see okay so these are just representative for the time being so 3 to so 3 to 4 is the first turbine 4 to 5 is the uh, reheating 5 to 6 is the second turbine 6 to 1 is the heat rejection in the condenser now 6 to 1 uh, i mean uh, is the heat rejection in the condenser 1 to 2 is 1 to 2 is basically the pump work and then 2 to 3 is basically the heat addition okay so what i can do i can uh, draw like draw it like this So, 2 to 3 is the heat addition in the boiler. So, maybe I will improve this diagram. Two to three, three to four, then four to five, 
three two four. 4 to 5 and then 5 to 6. Okay, so, 5 to 6 is the second turbine. So, this is the steam turbine cycle. Now, there is a uh, topping cycle that is the gas power, gas power plant. So, that is based on the Breton cycle, which we have already seen how to solve this type of problem. So, now what is happening there? There you have uh, another cycle basically. So, let us say, so in the in the Breton cycle you have an isentropic compression process which is 7 to uh, let us say 7 to 8 is the compression following an isentropic process, 8 to, 8 to 9 is basically heat addition 8 to 9. Okay and then you have 9 to 10 which is 9 to 10 is the expansion in the turbine this is an isentropic process and then you have this heat rejection okay at constant pressure so so 10 to 7 uh, but here 10 to between 10 to 7 there is another process where you are rejecting heat and you are heating the water uh, heating the water from state 2 to state 3 from the exhaust heat from this point 10 to let us say 11. Okay. Okay. So, this is the gas cycle and this is your steam cycle. So, it is a combined cycle operation. So, you are supplying thermal energy during the process 8 to 9, during the process 8 to 9 to the compressed air. Okay. So, 7 to 8 is the isentropic compression. So, they are the air which is entering the cis cycle at 310 Kelvin. So, basically T7 is 310 Kelvin and the turbine inlet temperature is given that is T9 is 1400 Kelvin. Okay. So, these are given the combustion gases leaving the gas turbine are used to heat the steam at 12.5 mega Pascal to 500 degree centigrade in a heat exchanger. So, whatever combustion gases leaving the turbine exit that is at point 10 is used to heat up steam, uh, heat up water to superheated state. So, from 2 to 3 you are raising the temperature of water from 2 to make it superheated steam at 3.3. Okay. So, at, uh, at point 3 uh, the conditions are given that is 12 point, so P 3 is 12.5 mega Pascal and T 3 is temperature of the steam is 500 degree centigrade. Okay. So, this is the, this temperature is raised, uh, I mean is has increased from point 2 to point 3 because of the this exhaust gas whatever is coming from 10 to 11 that heat is utilized to raise the temperature of the feed water from point 0.2 to superheated state that is point 0.3. Okay. So, I can write it as, uh, so this is the q dot out of the gas turbine cycle q dot g out and that heat is used to, uh, to I mean in uh, to make the feed water to superheated vapor. Okay. So, 0.2 to 3. Okay, so, now we can calculate this and uh, first we have to start from the gas cycle. So, here the temperature uh, at 0 0.7 is given that is 310 Kelvin. Okay. Correspondingly, I can find what is H7 from the properties of the table. We are assuming uh, air as uh, uh, air is an ideal gas with variable specific heat. So, H7 can be obtained from the table as 310.24 kilojoule per kg. We have seen this how to obtain this properties in previous uh, previous tutorials on the on the Breton cycle and now I am not going into the details how to obtain this again and PR7 is the relative pressure corresponding to this state 7 that is 1.5546. Okay, so, that is the condition at point 0.7 uh, 
Now, this gas turbine cycle has a pressure ratio of 12. Okay. So, we can calculate what is the state 8. So, P R 8 relative pressure at point 8 is basically P 8 over P 7 multiplied by P R 7. So, P 8 over P 7 is basically the compression ratio that is 12 and P R 7 is 1.5546. So, you calculate the relative pressure as 18.66. Now, once you know the relative pressure from this you can find what is H 8. H 8 again from the table you can find as 613.818 kilojoule per kg. Okay. Now, I, I can come to the point 9 that is the turbine inlet temperature it is given. So, T 9 is 1400 Kelvin and correspondingly I can find from the table what is H 9, H 9 is 1515.42 kilojoule per kg and what is P R 9? that again we can find from the table as 450.5. So, we know this state 9, now we can come to state 10. So, P R 10 is the relative pressure at point 10 that should be equal to P 10 over P 9 multiplied by P R 9. So, P 10 over P 9 is basically uh, P 7 over P 8, right? Because P, uh, P 7 is equal to P 10 and P 9 is equal to P 8. Now, P 7 over P 8 is nothing but 1 over 12, right? that is the 1 over compression ratio and P R 9 is 450.5 and if you evaluate this, you will get it as 37.54. Now, corresponding to this P R 10, you can find what is H 10 and H 10 can be obtained from the table as 700. 68.38 kilojoule per kg. So, so far we have obtained the enthalpies corresponding to all the points of the gas cycle. So, basically 7, 8, 9 and 10. Okay. Now, we will proceed to the stream cycle and we have to find the enthalpies of different states. Okay. So, the stream, uh, stream cycle is basically the similar analysis whatever we have done in the previous questions. So, uh, we can uh, we can try to repeat that, but uh, I think you can also do it yourself. So only only catch is here that the combustion gases that is leaving the leaving the turbine is used to produce the steam. Okay, and these combustion gases are leaving the heat exchanger at 247 degree centigrade. So basically, 10 to 11 is an heat exchanger where the exhaust heat from the combustion gases is used to produce steam. Okay. So, H 10 minus H 11 is the enthalpy difference of the air, but we need to calculate what is H 11 first. Okay. So, what is given is that the temperature of this point 11 is given. So, I will use the next slide. So, T 11 is given, T 11 is basically 247 degree centigrade or you can write it as 520 Kelvin. Okay. So, now correspondingly from the table of air you can find what is the enthalpy corresponding to this point and you will find it as 523.63 kilojoule per kg. So, that is another point on the gas cycle. Okay. So, this is the point where the uh, exhaust gases are leaving the heat exchanger so, uh, where you are basically producing steam. Okay. So, 10 to 11 is the heat rejection from the combustion product and that heat is utilized to produce the superheated steam between point 0.2 to 3. Okay. So, we know the enthalpy for point 11. Now, coming to these uh, so questions, so what is given is the mass flow rate of the steam that is 12 kg per second. Okay. So, m dot s is given 12 kg per second and uh, the condenser pressure is given that is 10 kilo Pascal. Okay. So, this is 10 kilo Pascal and the boiler pressure was 12 and half mega Pascal. So, there is no boiler this is a heat exchanger 12 and half mega Pascal and temperature corresponding to this third point is given that is 500 degree centigrade and then there is a 
the stream expands in a high pressure turbine to 2 and half bar, 2 and half mega Pascal. So, this is basically your constant pressure line of 2 and half mega Pascal and this temperature is given 550 degree centigrade. Okay. Right. So, all these states are defined, now we can calculate assuming all the compression and expansion processes to be isentropic. Right. So, these are all isentropic expansion and compression process. So, determine the mass flow rate of air in the gas turbine cycle. So, what is m dot air in the gas turbine cycle that we need to find. Okay. That is the first question. Second question is the rate of total heat input that is the q in. So, key rate, rate of heat input is basically uh, H8 to H9 and also here during the reheating of the steam. Okay. So, that is also Q in. So, you have to take a uh, uh, sum of these two heat transfer. Okay. So, that is the total amount of heat transfer between 0 0.8 to 9 and 4 to 5 and then we can calculate what is the thermal efficiency. So, for calculation of the thermal efficiency, you need to know what is the net work output of the gas cycle and what is the net output of the steam cycle. Okay. So, then you can calculate the thermal efficiency of the combined cycle. Now, coming to the steam cycle, you can start with point 1 and you can find what is the enthalpy of the saturated water at 10 kilo Pascal. So, that is the enthalpy of point 1. The enthalpy of point 2 will be enthalpy of point 1 plus the pump work pump work again you can find it as uh, specific volume at point 1 multiplied by delta p that is p 2 minus p 1. Okay. So, you can find h 1 and h 2, h 3 you can find from this pressure and temperature is given 12 and half mega Pascal and 500 degree centigrade correspondingly you can find what is h 3. Now, 3 to 4 is an isentropic process and there the steam expands in a high, uh, high pressure turbine and if you see uh, then uh, basically you can find uh, this thing. Uh, so, you, you can find what is the condition at point 4. Okay, you can find what is the condition at point 4 and condition at point 4 will be again you can find what is the enthalpy of point 4. Now, coming to point 5 here again the pressure is given that is 2 and half mega Pascal and temperature is 550 degree centigrade correspondingly you can find from the steam table what is H 5. Okay. Next is the point 6, you can find what is the uh, guidance fraction of point 6 equating S 5 is equal to S 6 and then you can find what is the enthalpy of point 6. So, by this process you can find enthalpies of all these individual points. So, since we have done this type of problem several times, I will not again uh, go step by step what I will do, I will give you the end results. Okay. So, enthalpies of all these points. Okay. So, if you find uh, from the table, enthalpy of first point H 1 is 191.81 kilo joule per kg. This is the saturated water at 10 kilo Pascal, enthalpy of saturated water at 10 kilo Pascal. Now, enthalpy of point 2, you can find it as H 2 which is 204.42 kilo joule per kg. Now, enthalpy of point 3 can be found from P 3 equal to 12 and half mega Pascal and T 3 is 500 degree centigrade. So, from this you can find what is H 3 and H 3 is 3343.6 kilo joule per kg that is equal and and you know you can also find out the entropy for point 3 which is 6.4651 kilo joule per kg. Now, you can equate S 4 is equal to S 3 and then you will see that this point 4 will lie outside the vapor dome and therefore, uh, at P 4 equal to 2 and half mega Pascal, you can calculate what is H 4. So, you have to do some interpolation and then finally, you will get 2909.6 kilo joule per kg. This is from the superheated vapor table. 
Now, condition at 5 is given that is 2 and half mega Pascal and T 5 is 550 degree centigrade. So, this is after reheating and then you know what is the H 5 for this H 5 is 3574 point 4 kilojoule per kg and S 5 is 7.4653 kilojoule per kg Kelvin. Okay. Now, you can equate S 5 is equal to S 6 and you know that P 6 is basically 10 kilo Pascal that is the condenser pressure. Okay. You can find first X 6, X 6 can be obtained as 0.9089 and then you can find H 6, H 6 you obtain as 2365.8 kilo joule per kg. Okay. So, these are the all the 6 points on the stream cycle. Okay. So, now you know all the enthalpies of different points both on the gas cycle and the stream cycle. The first part of the question is that the mass flow rate of air in the gas turbine cycle. Okay. So, how we can find the mass flow rate of air? we have to do an energy balance across the heat exchanger. So, in the heat exchanger combustion products are entering at point 10 and it is coming out at point 11 and whereas, the feed water is entering at point 2 and it is coming out at point 3. So, we have to do an energy balance between this and then we can find uh, the m dot a r. Okay. So, basically we will start with the first law of thermodynamics and energy in is basically equal to energy out and then I can basically write m dot i h i. Okay. So, i is basically in and m dot o h o, o basically refers to the outlets. Okay. So, I am neglecting the changes in kinetic and potential energies as usual and here whatever is coming in I can write it as uh, basically this can be written as m dot s h 3 minus h 2 is the difference in enthalpy of the superheated vapor and the feed water and that should be equal to m dot a r and this will be. So, heat is rejected from 10 to 11. So, h 10 minus h 11. So, now you can plug in all the numbers and you can calculate m dot a r. So, m dot a r is m dot s, m dot s is given as 12 kg per second and here h 3 minus h 2, h 3 is 3343.6 3 minus h 2 is 204.42 divided by h 10 that is 768.38 minus 523.63. Okay, so, this will give you the m dot a r which is 153.9 kg per second. So, that is the m dot a r. Next part of the question is that the rate of total heat input. Okay. So, the heat is added during 8 to 9 and 4 to 5. Okay. So, we can calculate q dot in as q dot a r plus q dot uh, reheat okay. q dot reheat. Now, q dot air is basically m dot air times h 9 minus h 8 and this is m dot reheat times h 5 minus h 4. So, you have to just put in the numbers we all know that enthalpies of different point and m dot air and m dot reheat is so m dot reheat is nothing but m dot steam right which we uh, which we know as 12 kg per second okay m dot air we obtained as 1539.153.9 kg per second so you have to just plug in the numbers and obtain q dot in and q dot in is 1.44 into 10 raise to power 5 kilowatt so, that is the amount of heat addition. Next we can, next question is that we have to find out the thermal efficiency of the combined cycle. 
So, for thermal efficiency we need to calculate what is the amount of heat rejection. So, first we will start with the q dot out, q dot out is basically q dot out of air plus q dot out of the steam cycle. So, this is the gas turbine cycle, this is the steam turbine cycle. So, q dot out if you look at the diagram, so 11 to 7 there is q dot out and between 6 to 1 there is q dot out right. So, there is heat rejection during this process and heat rejection during this process. So, what I have to do? I have to add, add both of them. So, this will be m dot air times h 11 minus h 7 and uh, this will be m dot steam times h 6 minus h 1. Okay. So, now you again put in the numbers and q dot out you op, we will get it as. Uh, so, let us say m dot air is 153.9 h 11 is 523.63 h 7 is 310.24 m dot steam is 12 kg per second h 6 is 2, 3, 6, 5.8 h 1 is 191.81. So, you calculate this as 58930 kilowatt. Now, the thermal efficiency of the cycle of the combined cycle will be 1 minus q dot out over q dot in. Now, this is q dot out is 58930 and q dot in is 1.44 into 10 raise to power 5. So, that we will give you as 0.5913 or 59.13 percent. Okay. So, this is the efficiency of the combined cycle. So, we can see, uh, we, I mean using similar approach you can basically solve different problems on a combined cycle. So, in this, in this problem there is a combined cycle of gas turbine and the steam turbine and the heat rejected from the hot gases at the exit of the turbine is used to produce steam in a steam generator and then uh, there is a reheat also and here also heat is supplied between 0.4 to 5 and then the steam expands from 5 to 6 and then there is a heat rejection between 6 to 1 from the steam cycle and there is also heat rejection between 11 to 7. Okay. So, these two heat are the heat rejections between 11 to 7 and uh, 6 to 1 and what is the heat supplied to the system is basically between 0.8 to 9 that is the heat supplied and between 4 to 5. Okay. So, I mean similar type of problem can be there with regeneration or multiple reheating or intercooling. So, this type of things I mean uh, you can practice. So, first you have to identify all the end points in terms of the enthalpies and then you can basically do the energy balance or mass balance you can uh, calculate the other properties. So, this brings us to the end of this tutorial and the, in the next tutorial we are going to begin refrigeration cycle. Thank you.